Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. This is going to be a quick one, just kind of a heads up video, but the Compute Module 4 is now available. You can actually purchase it right now from different retailers, and I should have one in the next couple days along with the I.O. board so we can take a look at this thing. Now overall, I'm loving the idea behind this. We have the same power as the Raspberry Pi 4, but the form factor has totally changed from the Compute Module 3 or the Compute Module 3 Plus. And what this means is products and projects that already use the existing Compute Module 3 or 3 Plus will not work with this, or this will not work with those projects. I had really high hopes that they were going to stick with that SODEM form factor, but unfortunately, it's totally changed. And it's definitely changed for the better, but this means that all of the products that use the original Compute Module, the Compute Module 3, or the Compute Module 3 Plus are not compatible with the Compute Module 4. It would have been real nice to keep that form factor or maybe even have two different versions, but unfortunately, we're not going to be able to upgrade those. But this form factor here is definitely going to help out in the long run for future products and future projects. So here's the Raspberry Pi Foundation's blog on the Compute Module 4. I will leave a link in the description in case you want to read through this. But basically, we'll just go over the specs real quick. We have the same CPU as the Raspberry Pi 4. It's a 1.5 GHz Cortex-A72 CPU. Same video core GPU, it supports up to OpenGL ES 3.2 at the moment, 4K60 hardware decoding at H265, 1080p60 hardware decoding, and 1080p30 hardware encoding at H264. Dual HDMI interfaces, and something that I'm super excited about, single lane PCI Express 2.0 interface. Now, as you can see here, there's no ports to really talk about on the unit itself, it's all gonna rely on the I.O. board, and we'll take a look at that real quick. Now we have a lot of different expansion on here. Full size HDMI, gigabit ethernet, USB 2.0, micro SD card, our barrel jack in for power, this will take 12 volts in, RTC battery location, 40 pin GPIO header. We have our camera connectors here. If we get in a bit closer, you can see we have that PCIe X1 slot. So we can add different PCIe expansion cards here. Now a video card's not gonna work out of the box. Somebody's probably gonna get something working, but still it's only gonna be running at X1 speeds. And I'm sure somebody will get a video card working with this IO board and the compute module four. I mean, it's just a matter of time. That's really how it is. And as for pricing on the new compute module four, I mean, it ranges quite a bit because they have 32 different variants. You can get them with one gig of RAM, two, four, up to eight, you can get them with no built-in eMMC or from 8 gigabytes up to 32. You can also choose to opt out of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So overall, there are 32 variants of this and it ranges from $25 up to $90. And that does not include the I.O. board. The official I.O. board is sitting at $35. And I will tell you right now that this is not for media consumption or anything like that. This is for embedded projects. And in time, few months or so, we will have some awesome little Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 handhelds and laptops available. I'm sure these manufacturers are going to jump right on this. But like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this isn't going to be compatible with existing Compute Module 3 or 3 Plus products. I was hoping for that SODEM form factor so we could just drop a Compute Module 4 and upgrade that unit, but unfortunately that's not how it is right now and we will have to wait to see what different manufacturers come up with as handhelds and laptops and different products with the Compute Module 4. But yeah, there's a lot more to this and I will have one in the next couple days. I'm going to do a full review, we'll do some tests with that PCIe slot and everything like that. But right now, if you're interested in checking out a video on this, I will leave a link to Jeff Greeley's YouTube channel. He was actually lucky enough to get a hold of an I.O. board and a Compute Module 4. He's got a video out right now and he does a lot of testing with it. So that will be linked in the description. Definitely check his channel out. He is amazing with the Raspberry Pi. But that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Definitely keep an eye on the channel because I do have the Compute Module 4 along with the I.O. board on the way. I will have a full review coming up in the next few days. So if there's anything at all you want to see tested on this new unit, just let me know in the comments below. And I'd also like to know your thoughts on this new design. It's super compact and instead of using the SODEM pinout, it's actually using two 100 pin high density electrical interface connectors. So we have 200 pins going into the I.O. board or whatever product is going to be using this in the future. I love the fact that on the higher end models, they were able to pack in eMMC storage, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and even an Ethernet controller chip along with that Raspberry Pi 4 CPU. I believe this is going to turn out to be really awesome for embedded projects, and it's also going to be pretty awesome for handheld devices. Handheld computers, handheld emulation systems, 
you name it, we will see those in the future, but it's going to take a little bit of time, but I can't wait to see what comes up the new Compute Module 4. That's it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'm also going to leave all links for everything mentioned in this video in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.